Thank you so much. So how is everyone? How are you all feeling? A little pulse check. I'm tired, yeah. Just take a moment. It's super intense. <laughs> So thanks so much for coming to my session. My name is Carrie Jordan. I'm the executive director for The Carpentries. And what I'm going to do is introduce, OK, Paso? Oh. OK, there we go. Oh, no. Oh. Don't OK. Um, so what I'm going to do is introduce a tool that the Carpentries launched, and it's called the Toolkit of Ideas. And I'm going to introduce it here, and we're, we are going to use it in a couple of different contexts. So you have the option to go to this URL where there is a collaborative notes document. If you don't have a computer or your phone on you, that's totally fine. We can discuss it in the room. But there is space for you to write out your thoughts in this collaborative document. So I'll pause for one second in case you want to go to the link. God dang it. <laughs> Give me one second. <laughs> I thought I fixed all the permission thingies. OK. <clears throat> Let me give you access. I'll keep talking while I'm wait while I'm working on the access. So as I mentioned, in 15 minutes, <laughs> which doesn't seem like a lot of time, but we can do it, we're going to apply the Carpentry's recently published toolkit of ideas in a, collabor a collaborative way to talk about inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility strategies for building the CSV conference community or any other community that you are involved with or any other open source project. So we're going to use CSV as an example um, in order to apply this toolkit. My laptop is connecting to the internet, so once, once it does, I'll refresh the document. If you're not familiar with the Carpentries, we are a nonprofit project um, that teaches foundational coding and data science skills. So we have three lesson programs, library, data, and software Carpentries. We've run workshops in 71 countries, and we have a 3,000 plus volunteer instructor community. We develop all of our lessons collaboratively. All of our lessons are on GitHub. You can use them. You can remix them. So if you want more information about the Carpentries, I have cards here. We have stickers out there. And many of you are instructors and trainers and community members. So thank you so much. <laughs> so what is the toolkit of ideas? Last year, we received funding from the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative to improve our accessibility inclusion and diversity resources for the Carpentries. One of the resources that we created is called the Toolkit of Ideas. I got my laptop working now. Anyone with the link can edit. There we go. OK, if you refresh, you should have access to the document now. So we released a toolkit. IDEAS is an acronym for Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Accessibility Strategies. We wanted to create a very practical resource for our community to help you figure out how, what do you need to think about before, during, and after a Carpentries workshop in order to make it more inclusive, more equitable, et cetera. We didn't want this to be a 100-page document with all kinds of checklists and steps. We wanted it to be something very practical that you could adapt for your community in your language. So we wanted it to be very easily to onboard many community members. Before we get into the toolkit, I want to do a little glossary, because this is an international conference, some of these terms are not used 
in some places and in some contexts. And so what do I mean when I say inclusion, et cetera? So the Carpentry's definition of inclusion is the active, intentional, and ongoing engagement of diverse people and communities that increases awareness, content knowledge, and empathetic understanding of the ways that we interact with and change our community. So basically, that means invite the people to the party and ask them to dance. We've been hearing a lot about people being invited into the room, but not having an opportunity to contribute. So that's what we mean by inclusion. Diversity, we just, when we talk about diversity, it's all of our differences being okay <laughs> and using our differences in a way that can engage each other in the service of learning. That's what we think about when we say diversity. Equity is creating equal access for individuals to participate in programming. So no matter who you are, where you're from, what language you speak, you have access to the resources that you need in order to contribute to a project, to a community, et cetera. And then accessibility is designing products and services in a way that is usable by the most people. So those are just some definitions. And if we have time, maybe at the reception, it will be really cool to understand what do those definitions, or what do those terms mean in the different communities that you come from. So we're going to apply this toolkit of ideas to organize the next CSV conference. Hopefully, we'll have a version eight. Um, so how can we use this toolkit to organize the next CSV conference? So if you go to the URL, you'll see these same questions. The toolkit is broken down. Rather than having a checklist, in order to be inclusive, you need to do these five things. We all know there's no such thing as a checklist for things like inclusion and diversity, right? So the toolkit is set up in a question format. So we're going to practice. These are some of the questions that we, can, that we have in the toolkit. I want us to discuss these questions in this room. So the context that we're using is CSV Conference version 8. We're all a part of the organizing committee. We want to make the next CSV Conference even more inclusive. Here are some questions that we're going to think about. What barriers prevent learners or, or participants from registering from the conference? How can you ensure data enthusiasts feel that the conference is for them? Where and when will we offer the next CSV conference? And who might not be able to attend the conference because of the choices that we're making? And then lastly, what is one thing that we want to try as a conference organizer in order to make it more inclusive? So what we're going to do is take the next three minutes. You can either silently in the document, if you have your um, laptops open, you can silently write out the answers to these questions. Or since, you're, since we love each other so much, you can talk amongst the group um, that you're sitting next to. Pick any of the questions. We only have three minutes. So pick any of the questions um, that you want to think about and come up with some ideas. Okay, I'm going to time us for three minutes, and then I would love to have one or two volunteers share out what you discussed or what you typed. Okay, questions? All right, three minutes. <laughs> yes, go, sorry. <laughs>
have about a minute and a half. There's so many great ideas. Okay, we have 30 seconds. So decide who's going to report out. I want one person from this side of the room and one person from this side of the room. Okay, who will volunteer from this side of the room to share one of the answers to a question? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll let Jason go first, um, and then I'll give y'all I'll give y'all a chance. <laughs> uh, one of the ones that I think happens is like they just people self-select out because they're like, that's not for me. It's for geeks, or it's for somebody else. Who's yes. Just So what would be a solution to raising awareness about you all, about the kinds of people that attend CSVCOM? Yeah. I would say maybe some kind of more recap. Mm-hmm. So people knowing, oh, this is what happened last year. Where yes. All these people were discussing because that would serve as a motivation. Yeah. I mean, in my case, I actually have to look up all the previous websites for the previous years to get an idea of what exactly we were going to discuss here. Yeah, yeah. Because I was a bit like, should I apply? Maybe yes, no. Yes. And it could, the recap could be something super short, like a reel or something that you all, we all could share, you know, on different platforms. Video, maybe. Mm -hmm. Just like people say, oh, this year it was super cool because X and Y reason. Exactly. What else? I was going to say, highlight the the vulnerable moments or those moments that stand out for mm -hmm. people that might get excluded. Like when Renato helped me get my llama out of that machine. That was a very vulnerable <laughs> moment for me. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> One person from this side of the room who has the courage. I see all of you, just like, so, yes. <laughs> Go ahead. I could write it in, in my No book. problem. I don't know why. But, uh, but among barriers, I, I, yeah. uh, one significant one and, uh, maybe we should take care about in thinking about the next uh, venues for this event mm -hmm. is the visa restriction. Yes. There are countries with less visa restriction than others. Uh, and that should be taken. If, if, if you really want to be open for mm -hmm. it's not only, uh, and also, uh, you know, hybrid events. Yeah. Uh, taking care about the possibilities to interact with people virtually and not to give them the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes I've been in events where they are hybrid, but, but there is a, a differential treatment for people who is yeah. in their computers and the ones that yeah. have the opportunity or privilege to be there. Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. Any recommendations for, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we were actually discussing that maybe Where the conference is being done. Yeah. Time, so I saw that. Locally. Absolutely. I saw someone writing in the document something about rotating the regions or something like that so that it's easier for some somebody at some point um, will be able to get there. I love it. Yeah. Well, we have that. Has anyone experienced or experimented with distributed conferences? For instance, having one hub in every country mm. simultaneously connected them? Yeah. We need money. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like watch parties. So yes. Watch parties. Yeah. Because it goes like in groups around. Yes. And um, like a workshop for them or like a day event. Right. 
I love that idea. Even if it was maybe just the keynotes or something like that, that's a really cool idea. Anything else before I go to the next slide? I know I only have three minutes left. Okay, so here are some things. So in the toolkit, we not only pose questions for you to ask yourself how to make your, again, your event, your coding project, whatever you're working on, how to make it more inclusive, equitable, et cetera, we also provide some recommendations. So for this example that we just gave, some of the recommendations we, we included were in the case of an in-person conference, are there gender neutral bathrooms or are there places where you know you can breast or chest feed to ensure you know for those who are parents they have access to those facilities um, thinking about the snacks and the catering did you ask what you know dietary restrictions individuals have things like that um, or just an open-ended question in the registration what are the ways that we could help you make this this conference more inclusive? What, what are some things that we could do to ensure you would feel included in this conference? You can't solve all the problems, you can't fix everything, but trying, you know, and sh putting forth an effort to show that you're trying to do, you know, inclusive practices, it makes a big difference. So some takeaways. This toolkit, again, I have it linked in the slides and I provided a link in that collaborative notes document. This is what it looks like. It's up on Zenodo, so of course open source. It breaks down, again, inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility. Those open-ended questions that you can ask yourself if you're organizing a conference, a hackathon, a community meeting, or if you want to get more people involved in your open source project in general, and you want it to be more inclusive, more equitable, et cetera, we want you to use this toolkit for any and every case um, in this community. So I encourage you to download it. I think we have about 1,600 downloads so far. We've been getting really great feedback and we're gonna continue to revise it based on how people are using it. And that is all my time, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Woo!